One of the things that Pope John Paul II often used to say throughout his life, and especially his time as a priest, is he would say, culture drives history. That the culture that we have and the type of culture we have, it, it drives history. And if we understand history is literally his story, the story of Christ, that all is reconciled in the person of Christ. Paul says, um, all were created through him, all were created for him. He is before all else that is. Everything continues in being in him. And then John Paul II is right, is that culture will drive history. And so it's important then that we have a sense of life in culture. If we have a culture that worships what the Greeks called necros or death, then we have what John Paul calls a culture of death, as he says in his encyclical Evangelium Vitae in 1995. And as Americans, it's sometimes helpful, I think, especially maybe as Catholic Americans, not American Catholics, Catholics, Ameri Catholic Americans, that we have a sense of the Enlightenment thinkers. And why is that important? Because they've really influenced a lot of the way we think. Like, maybe just, a, just a few. Rene Descartes, 17th century, he said, I think, therefore I am, cogito ergo sum. And even though he was educated by the, the Jesuits, he separated the body and the soul. So he said, what we do with our bodies, it, it really doesn't matter. And that's not the case, because was what we believe as Catholics and Christians is what I do with my body impacts my soul. There's a man named Thomas Hobbes in the 17th century. And his thing, one of the things that he said a lot was, um, everyone has a right to everything. And if I want something, then I have a right to it. And not only do I have a right to it, the courts need to protect that right. And then also, if you say something against my right, then you're intolerant. Sounds familiar for a lot of us. Um, there's a man named Jean-Jacques Rousseau in the 18th century in France. And, um, and what he said was, you know, not all religion is bad. He didn't like religion, but he said, it's not so bad, but make sure you keep it in the privacy of your own home. So we see this in our culture, don't we? They say, don't impose your beliefs on me. It's kind of ironic that we hear that because a lot of times the people that say don't impose your belief on me are imposing their atheisms on, on those that have belief. And so that happens a lot. And then we had a man like um, John Locke in the 17th century as well. had a big impact on our culture in the West. And he was pretty anti-Catholic in many ways. So we have different thinkers that, would, that really impacted our culture. We had Francis Bacon in the 17th century. And maybe you've heard this expression, knowledge is power. We get that from Bacon. And Bacon said, something has value only to the extent that we can give it value. It doesn't have value in itself. And that runs contradictory to what Genesis says. It says, it is good, it is good, it is good, it is very good. So things have value because God gave it to them, not because we gave it to them. It's important because if we give something value, then if we don't give it value, it doesn't have value. And we can kill it. Sometimes we see that in bioethics. And so as a culture, we have to understand that the choices that we make, they impact culture. As Catholics, when we make the sign of the cross, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we're saying that that reason, that our thinking, it goes with our heart. And so faith and reason, they go together. We touch our shoulders because Jesus carried his cross every day on his shoulders. And so we're saying, Lord, help me to carry my cross every day. And we're also calling on the Trinity to bless us. 1869, and the first Vatican Council, we had, um, we had a document called Dei Filius, and it said that faith and reason go together. John Paul II's encyclical, Faith and Reason, said the mind and the heart, faith and reason working together, were like two wings of the same bird that bring us to God. That's important because some people have written books all about God, but they don't pray. So the God that they make is nice and safe. He makes no, no demands on me. But some people pray, but they don't know their, their faith. And so when people attack their faith, they can't defend their faith. So we need the faith and, and reason working together. This is how God designed this.